I, you know, this is not a moment that I have to spend time to get a life, so I'm going to flip Camden. If you don't want to be on camera, just go like this. And I have two cameras left, one is fucked up. So I want to hear your questions and I want to hear the answers. And I'm going to put it together and let a document of this moment. It's nice. Great. Where's the other? Where's the other? Where's the other? Steve, who's, you should be coming. Who's doing the other camera? Who's doing the other camera? We lost the camera guy. Where was the question? Where was the first question? Right now, he's right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I was just wondering when you did the original uh, trailer to submit for uh, Grindhouse, uh, did you conceptualize this as a whole film? And if you did, did it turn out like you wanted to? And if not, what, what was the transition like? from taking it from a trailer to a full-length film. Yeah, um, well, when we sat down to come up with the idea for that original trailer, we kind of plotted the whole story for a feature film and then picked up the moments that we thought would work great right in the trailer. So it wasn't too hard for us to bang out a treatment right away. But it's, I, don't, I can't remember how many drafts of the script we've had. It's probably in like, I don't know, over, probably around 30 drafts of the script. So it's turned, it turned into several different pieces throughout the project, or process. Shut up. <laughs> Rucker Howard just told me to shut up. I think my life is complete. But um, I was wondering, in that one part where uh, the bad guy gets kicked in the nuts, did his nuts come out through his eye sockets, or did I misread that? I, I love that uh, question, actually. It's one of the much uh, sort of uh, debates about parts of the film. And, uh, Actually, there's two camps. There are the people who believe that those are his eyeballs uh, getting re-knocked uh, out because um, they were poked in. And there are other people, as yourself, that believe them to be his testicles coming all the way up through his body <laughs> and up through the eye sockets. Oh, um, right. That are oh, yeah. Because he has yeah, all yeah, the way. Right. Um, um, very what nice. What we really wanted to do with that moment um, is to leave that as an open question. <laughs> It so yeah, so it's open to interpretation. Okay, next, coming. Yes, I'm um, gonna go further what down. Sort of film, obviously, a lot of oh. Could you just kind of give us maybe a short list of what uh, you know you went looking for and what you invested in and kind of research-wise for this film? Um, yes, um, that's actually, a really nice yeah. question. I made an inspiration reel. It's a nice before. question. Yeah. I, it, I made this like, inspir like 15 minute inspirational reel to like, show my crew uh, before going to production to give them an idea of the kind of world we were stepping into. So it was, I just made DVDs and handed them all out so they got a really quick head start into what they were jumping into. And so let me think films that were on that were uh, Stallone's Cobra, uh, Dead End Driving, uh, Brian Trenchard Smith, uh, The Warriors, of course, which is my favorite film of all time. Uh, George Miller, Mad Max, and Death Wish. Uh, let me think. Uh, Sergio Cabucci's Django. Uh, let me think. Uh, uh, Vice Squad, which is another big inspiration as well. Uh, so yeah, there was just a, there's just an onslaught of uh, crazy inspirations from uh, exploitation films of the past. Yeah. Oh, there's... Here. Oh, okay. Joker's got a right there. All right. <laughs> um, first of all, I wanted to compliment you on the film. I loved it. Uh, secondly, um, I know it's early, but I was wondering if you had any plans to release the soundtrack, because the soundtrack was absolutely amazing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we definitely want to. I'm not too sure uh, how we're going to go about doing it, but I'm hoping that at least we can get it up on iTunes. Yeah. All right. You're in the back. Wait. <laughs> Uh, first of all, I wanted to con congratulate you guys because I don't think I've ever flip-flopped that many times between laughing and being genuinely disturbed in my entire life. <laughs> and I was curious, how, do you have any idea how many gallons of blood you used for filming that? I lost track. We had buckets and buckets of it. Uh, we actually have a little extra feature on YouTube where we kind of talk about how much blood was used in the film. We actually had a designated blood truck. And my buddy Henry Townsend... I uh, was in charge of the blood, and he would, he would come to set, and I would see him every day just covered in blood. 
Um, and I would walk on set, there would be at least like 16 to 20 buckets of blood on set every day. I'm not too, there was different kinds of uh, blood, but like my favorite is uh, molasses and food coloring. Even though I hate the smell of molasses, but it just looks so great. I thought he was going to ask, how was it to be in the bus? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that bus scene was uh, very crazy to shoot just because uh, it was in a really tight space, and the actor who had used the flamethrower, um, when he shot off the flame, it actually singed the hair of Ivan in the back. His hair all just went. <laughs> that question was good. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, hold on. We'll get this one. It's still Mine, sensitive, sensitive question. <laughs> Mine's for Rucker. How, how much fun did you have making this movie? Because I loved it. It seemed like you had a lot of fun. A uh, decision was made in about 20 seconds to do the movie, and I was in Cape Town, and it's just love, you know. I don't know this genre at all. I don't give a shit. <laughs> it's just, uh, there's a new way of filmmaking. It's about love, you know, the love that we all share. And uh, in, in this time, uh, every, anybody can do it. And if you find the right people, you can start today. So that's, you know, that's it. Thank that's you. it. It's just a whole new way of making movies. And, and I think, uh, you know, I'm giving birth to uh, Jason so as a new director, so that's not bad. Um, yeah, I was curious uh, how, you, oh, yeah. how you pitched the movie to Rucker and what his initial reactions were. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> we'll shoot each other. I need to have your I need to have it. I need to have it. What's your question? Uh, I no, need, that, I need to have your question. Okay, I was saying, what initially, what was your reaction when Jason pitched the movie to you? What was your first reaction? You want to say hi, Mom? Hi, Mom. <laughs> okay. I'm getting filmed already. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that question. Forget it. They, they gave the script to him, and uh, I found out he wanted to get on a Skype call with me, and it was the first time I had, I've ever used Skype. And uh, we had a conversation. We actually didn't really talk about the film that much. Yeah. We, uh, I grew up wanting to be a marine biologist up until grade five. And uh, Rugger is an ocean conservationist, and we shared a love for the ocean. Yeah. That's how we bonded. Yeah. We dive deep. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so, yeah. so both of those films were just such a joy. Uh, and there's so many people that need to see them. When and how are we going to be able to share those films with our friends? How many people? Everybody. <laughs> it's not for everybody. I, I, I want my mom to see that movie. <laughs> yeah, my mom saw it for the first time on the premiere here. And I sat, we sat right behind her, and it was just like, she was like, that's the whole thing. I'm not too sure. Um, I know in Canada we're releasing it March 25th, and it'll probably be pretty soon after in the States. I want you to tell everybody not to go see this movie. <laughs> Out of the, the DVDs that you gave to the cast, were there any Tom Cruise movies? Because there seems to be a lot of like manic Tom Cruise with the the sons. No, there wasn't. There were no Tom Cruise. <laughs> I, I don't know. For me, Tom, it was like I kind Tom of the idea of taking this like take on like good looking. I don't know. I was like, a little bit inspired by like the good looking Twilight guys, and I just wanted to see those guys. <laughs> 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 Like very significant in the film, and actually, I first um, I met him here at Sundance when I was here with my film Revenge, and I looked him up on YouTube, and there was all these like fan videos made by I think young girls who were really excited about his work, and I told him I was like, listen, if you really want to be in this role, you got to realize I'm going to make all those teenagers who have posters of you on their wall, they're going to rip them right down, and he smiled and he thought, that's pretty awesome, my dad. <laughs> yeah. Um. First of all, I saw Treevenge uh, in 08, and I thought that was, like, phenomenal. Is there any way we can see that? Yeah, it's on YouTube. It's on YouTube now? Okay, so that wasn't really my question, but I just had to give a shout-out. Um, in the scene in the hospital, was the little boy being pushed through on the wheelchair, was that the kid from Beaver Dam, or was that just no. my imagination? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. No. <laughs> I still not like him. I thought maybe there was, like, a... Supposed to go together, and just kind of. Uh, no, and uh, oh, sorry. No, I was going to say this. We we uh, we just we just met on Friday. Okay. 
Yeah. Um, did you use a medical consultant, or was it all in your imagination to try to get the anatomy right? No. <laughs> Actually, the doctors in the film, I wanted them to be like the world's worst doctors ever. <laughs> that, that was my like, direction. You guys are the worst doctors ever. And they just love that. They really got to do it. One of my favorite scenes. <laughs> one of my favorite scenes, that one. Ah, two yeah. Questions. Two more questions. Two more questions? Oh, my God. Okay. What's your other favorite scene that you have? Anything other special? Ah, uh, the babies, I think. <laughs> Were you by any chance also the DP? Say again? Were you by any chance also the cinematographer on the film? Me? Yeah. yeah. No. no. Are they still paying you? Yeah, actually, you You could explain that maybe a little bit, but you were always rolling this on set. There's like 30 videos of behind-the-scenes footage on YouTube from Rucker. If you want to see some crappy... I'm a real crappy photographer, but I just think this is so... This is so nothing, but you can catch something. You go to, uh, I think it's under uh, Over with a Shotgun at the Alamo. There's some crap behind the scenes that is not usual. It's, but it's us having fun, and you'll get a real flavor of you know, certain moments when we came up to set and went, oh my God, you know, this was, this was really silly. Uh, I just want to say, though, it is important if you're ever making a short film to shoot behind the scenes as well, because we were just talking with uh, your distributor, and they were talking about maybe releasing Beaver Dam on a standalone. Uh, DVD, but they said the only way that they could do it, it, have, it, it through Walmart and whatever, is if it had 85 minutes of material. <laughs> 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 but, but that's not a problem. That's not a problem. If you should, if you should let's say you should a short for five minutes, you can talk for two hours about that, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> what a ball. <laughs> very supportive the whole uh, time and right from the beginning we were very honest with them obviously when they came to the audition they had access to the full script and it was very detailed about everything that was going to be in the movie and uh, uh, the, the one the one thing that uh, we came up against during the shooting was that uh, we were running late on the third day and we had to go into overtime because we didn't finish all our shots with the uh, the young Danny Zigwitz and uh, in California, the way the labor laws go is, you know, you're only allowed to shoot until midnight uh, if it's a, a non-school night or 10 p.m. and the studio teacher is there keeping watch. We weren't finishing all our shots and the mother was actually so supportive, she came up to me and she's like, you know, Jerome, you know, we can just rap and then the studio teacher will go home and we'll go and make a U-turn and just come right back. <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't know about that. She's like, well, he's going to be up anyway singing these songs. He might as well be, you know, doing it for the movie. So we actually, like, we had a code word, shot 13, and uh, if we weren't making it, we were like, what are we doing? We're doing it, shot 13, shot 13, shot 13, okay, it's a wrap. And we gave him this round of applause, and we're like, it's a wrap on LJ, and he went, and then they made a U-turn and came back, and we shot him until the morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, they were very supportive. Thank you, everyone. That's all we have to Thank you very much, Thank you. I'm going to leave. Thank you. Oh, I left my bag, I think. What do I do with my bag now? I'll grab it. My bag's right there at the, at the stadium. Can I get a picture with you? Yes, let me just go out because I want to see the... Uh, I just want to see the theater from the, from the other side. Let's see. Where is the... Uh, there it is. There it is. Okay. All right.